All right, in this tech set, we're going to talk about understanding for each loops in PowerShell. Now the loop construct is very common and you'll use this a lot, but it's not one thing that a lot of beginners um, start out with. So to demonstrate wh wh why you would want to use a, a for each loop or any loop in the first place, notice there on line two through four, I have three different commands. I am adding content to a bunch of different files and I'm adding the same value to three different files. So um, one thing that you need to look out for when you're scripting or programming in general is to be dry. And that's meant to don't repeat yourself. So notice that I'm actually calling the same command, add content three times with the same value on each of those. That's a clear indication that we need a loop. But what's a for each loop? Well, a for each loop allows us to do the same action, do the same expression multiple times on the same a set of value. So to demonstrate that, so let's say that looking up here again, what is the difference between each of these? There's no difference in the command, any of the parameters, except for the path parameter. So the path parameter has three different values there. See folder, file text, program files, and folder three, they're different. To convert this to a for each loop, a for each loop allows us to just run that add content and just dynamically put in what's different. It, it allows us to eliminate all that redundancy. So to do that, we first need to bring in all of these paths into an array. So we bring in all of the elements that are going to be different. In this case, we have three file paths. So now we have three file paths in an array. So that all works great. So how do you do a for each statement? Well, a for each statement, first of all, is we have different for each um, loops. We have a for each statement in PowerShell and we have a for each objects command line. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the for each statement. Then notice there on line 11, I kind of have a, a framework of the for each statement. The for each statement has uh, an iterator and it has the collection that you're going to be actually looping through. We call this looping through or iterating over each of those elements in an array. So we have the for each statement, then we have the close open paren and close paren, and inside there we have the iterator value. It's going to be the uh, actually the iterator variable, which can be anything. Normally it's um, uh, it could be dollar i, it could be dollar foo, it doesn't matter the variable name. And then we have the word in, which is in whatever collection it is. This In this instance, we're iterating over an, an array. And then on line 12 there, we have code goes here. Iterator is available in here only. So um, the iterator variable, that will only expand inside of that for each loop. So let me show you an example of what this is. So let's say that I have my path. So path has my three uh, uh, file paths in there. And let's say that I want to read each of those. I can read each of those with the for each loop. So that worked by PowerShell was able to read each of those values in paths and assign each of those elements one at a time the $i variable. But like I said, you don't have to use $i. $i is a common one in the programming world, but you can use path too, just the, uh, the singular form of path, and that will work as well. The variable does not matter. Now that we have that for each loop, we know that it's iterating over each of those. At this point, I can then add, run some kind of command in here and reference those values. So this instance, I'm just gonna use for each dollar, the dollar i in that collection or that those paths uh, array, and then I'm gonna call add content. So now that did exactly the same thing as before and notice that I only use three lines here I only use three lines up here, and this is a bad example, I guess, but I could have used 50 up here and still use three. So this is a lot cleaner way to perform an action on items in, uh, in a collection. So next up is, it's a little bit, uh, PowerShell will leave you confused at this at first, is that you have for the for each statement and the for each object commandlet. And these do just about the same thing. They're a little different under the hood, but uh, for the beginner, you probably don't need to worry about that. So let's say that I just ran this. I just have paths, my array, piped it to for each object. So every one of those elements inside of paths, so all my different um, 
file paths, each of those getting piped to the for each object commandlet. And then the for each object commandlet has a process parameter, which then is essentially the same thing as what I have here on line 22. It's ex just about exactly the same thing. There is some stuff under the hood. Like I said, it's different, but um, for all intents and purposes, for the beginner, just about the same thing. What do you think is more intuitive? Personally, I would use the for each statement over the for each commandlet because it's a little bit faster once you get started with some bigger arrays, but um, that's for another day. That is the for each object commandlet. And the for each object commandlet has a lot of other parameters on here that you can play with, like begin, process, and end. If you're familiar with the pipeline, it has begin, process, and end, remaining scripts, member name. There's a lot of different parameters on here we'll use, but you know, feel free to uh, RT, was it? RTFM, I guess, and, and use, the, uh, use the help and get a help for each object, and it will go through all those um, parameters for you. All right, so finally, we have the for each method. So to make it even more fun, in PowerShell version of four, they released a for each method. And the for each method is actually a method on collection. So how that works is since the method we use dot notation to append the dot and then the name of the method. So in this case we have paths here, and we use this by appending dot for each, and then we have an open paren, close paren like we do on all methods, and then we have a script lock in between here. This again, this does the exact same thing as the other ones. Uh, but you, what you'll find is in this instance. It's much, much faster under the hood. They made some improvements in PowerShell version 4. The for each method is uh, much faster to use. There's a few quirks and things that we may get into on later snips. Uh, they're more, more advanced. But if you're looking, if you have a very large array, like, for example, if paths was, I don't know, 100,000 elements or something, and you do a performance test, the for each method is typically the fastest because it's a method directly on the object itself. So that was a, a brief introduction to for each methods in PowerShell. I hope it was worthwhile.